there are certain engines that when they come in for parts, they go straight to the front of the line. And Cummins engines are absolutely one of those engines. And there's a few reasons. Number one, and the biggest, is these engines have a lot of parts that are worth pretty good money. The turbo, the injectors, the fuel injection pump, the bell housing adapter, just to name a few. Another reason is I don't get a lot of these cores in. So typically when one of these cores comes in, I don't have any of this stuff in stock, so it's really nice to replenish my inventory. Another reason is that, well, I haven't had a video on a Cummins in a long time, let alone a 5.9. I think it's been nearly two years. So it was, we were due. We were very well due for this. Now this is out of a 2004 Dodge Ram 2500. I don't know the mileage. I can tell you it's out of an automatic, which most of them are. And it is, according to the yard I bought it from, completely locked up. It doesn't turn either direction, not even a little. So I don't know if it's rusted up, if it's got a lower end problem. But we're going to tear this engine completely down. We'll see what part survived, what may have happened inside of this engine. And hopefully, I get a lot of good stuff to sell. Not all 5.9 Cummins make the same power. But this is out of a pickup truck, and it's a later 5.9. And I believe the power output of this engine is 325 horsepower and somewhere around 600 foot-pounds of torque. And I'm sure nobody ever modifies these to make more power or torque. Ever. No one would ever do that. Now, I get a lot of questions as to what I pay for these cores. And most of the time, I buy so many engines at one time for one lump price, it's impossible to tell you what I paid for each one. But this was a unique deal. One engine from one salvage yard, I paid $700 for it, which is a pretty good deal. If half of the parts that I can see on the outside are good, it's a wash. And I think I'll get more than that. So I think I, think I did pretty good here. Now the last thing before we get started is I'm tearing this down in a wooden crate, at least down to a short block. These are heavy, a thousand pounds or so. And mounting this to my engine stand while it is rated for that weight, the length of where the weight would be, it's not ideal. I think they make brackets to bolt the engine stand to the side, but it's been two years about since I've had one of these engines. And well, if I get a whole bunch of these in, it might be worth investing in. As some of you may have noticed, the valve cover is not really installed and I haven't really lifted it to look underneath. So we're going to remove the valve cover. It's pretty easy. You just lift it up when it's unbolted. And let's see what we've got going on in here. Um, let's get the gasket out of the way. There's some hardware that somebody threw in here. I have no idea what that goes to. It's not a valve spring. Fortunate that that's broken. Doesn't look like any of the tops of the injectors are broken, so that's good. All of the valve train components are in their home. For a pre-emission diesel, this is kind of grungy in here. They're usually a little bit cleaner than that, but I don't see anything out of place. Everything's where it's supposed to be. No signs of what's wrong yet. The next thing we're going to remove is the turbo and the exhaust manifold. We're gonna start with the oil feed line. Next, the oil return, and yes, this is smashed here, but I believe this is from moving this engine around with the forklift at the yard I got it from. Next, we'll start unbolting the exhaust manifold, but first the heat shield. Take a look at this turbo. So it spins really nice. About a normal amount of shaft play, no in and out play. Don't. I don't see anything heavily damaged on the housings, although this wire is cut. I don't really know what that does, but I'm sure somebody in the comments will happily put that down there. Wastegate appears to be in good shape. Now, I believe these are an HX35. And I might get corrected on that as well, but these were a really popular turbo for smaller import engines. They make pretty good power, 400-ish horsepower, and I'm just air quoting there. But that's what I've seen these things do quite regularly. It's definitely in good shape. There's no real damage to the impeller. 
that's a good sellable unit. The next thing I need to do is remove this intake pipe, but I need to get the dipstick tube out. I don't know what this is going to do to me, but Not too bad. Now we can remove this elbow here. Next, I'm going to start removing all these fuel injection lines, and I realize that most of these are just hanging out here. So we don't have too much work to do. This is in the way, and it was just hanging out there. As a warming grid, it heats the air as it goes into the intake manifold. Dropping stuff. And the last line here. While we're in the neighborhood, we're going to get this fuel filter housing out of the way. Let's see if there's any fuel in here. Yeah. I should probably get a pan for that, but there's really not a lot. That was like 10 cents worth. Not a big deal. And that's out. The next thing I'm going to do is remove these injector tubes. It's 24 millimeter. Well, there's a map sensor in the way. In fact, I'm just going to remove this intake manifold plate. Comes out really easy. And this engine hanger bracket is bent, so it's in the way of that. I'm going to get number six out of the way, and I'll come back and take that bracket off. I can just kind of leave that on there. Okay, now I'm going to go get a line thread onto those injection tubes and pull them out. See if this works. If it doesn't work, it should have. Yeah, these come out really easy. And they're all out. The next thing we're gonna do is disconnect the injector wire harness from the injectors. I'm gonna crack these loose first. We don't wanna break these. Not very tight, but they're not supposed to be. All right, now I think we can remove this plate here. Fine. I've got more tens. With that plate out of the way, it gives us a better look at the valve train. And I still don't see anything glaringly wrong. Not yet. It's just pretty dingy for one of these. The emissions diesels look like this, but generally speaking, the non-emissions diesels like this look a little bit cleaner. Next step, rockers, bridges, push rods. Okay, all that came out really nice and easy. Still don't see anything broken. I'll pull the push rods out. Ooh, 
that's that's ugly. Uh oh. I'm gonna just set that one there to show you guys what I found on that one. So these all look pretty decent. But there was one that I need to show you. Well, it must have fallen off, but there was a small sliver of metal on the end of this push rod. That and the oil does not look very good. Now we'll remove the injector hold on brackets and then pull the injectors. I don't think any of these will just lift right out, but maybe. Nah, let's get a little help here. One, let's move this out of the way. They all came right out. Well, I gave these things a quick brake clean bath and I looked at them a little closely and it looks like these are dated 05 1 15. So these have been replaced, which is not a shocker. A lot of these engines, by the time they're bad, have had at least one set of injectors done. None of the tips look snipped, I mean crushed, but they don't all look the same. That one's a lot darker than some of the others. So is number six. And I'm not quite sure what that means because I'm not a diesel guy. So you guys that work on this stuff all the time, what does that mean? The injectors do look like they're in pretty good physical condition. So at worst case, this would be a nice set of cores to have rebuilt. The very last thing we need to do before we pull the head bolts out is to remove these harness brackets so the harness is not attached to the cylinder head. Oh, 13. And now there is nothing holding the head to the block except for the head bolts. Now it's time to crack the head bolts loose. I'm going to keep two of the head bolts so that we can lift the block easily. All the head bolts are out. This should come straight off. Yep. Here we go. Oh, I don't know if I can lift this. I don't know. Oh, I'm glad I've been going to the gym a lot lately. Well, let's take a look here. That's fine. Mm. Head gasket looks pretty decent. And then the block, not so much. So you can definitely see there's some damage to the bore in cylinder one. And I'm really going to be curious to see what that piston looks like when it comes out. That's it's pretty ugly. Cylinder 2 has a little bit of damage. Not nearly as bad. We can't see 3 and 4. I don't really see any major damage. Nothing that's jumping out at me at the pistons or anything. We don't really know until we get them out. And I don't see anything that explains why it would be locked up. Again, I haven't verified that information. I haven't tried to turn this thing over. We'll get to that point pretty soon. Now let's see if we can turn this cylinder head over. I have my doubts. These are a little on the, uh, on the heavy side. Now we're going we're gonna to do something different by lifting it on this side.
Is everything going to be fine if I do this? Sure, why not? Oh, yeah, it's got a stand. It's a kickstand. Well, the bottom of the cylinder head, there's some pretty questionable areas here. Especially in this cylinder here at cylinder three. That pisses at the top of the bore, but look at the buildup on there. What causes that? The rest of this looks pretty normal. I don't see impact marks from a piston, so that's good. The next thing we're going to work on is the fuel injection pump. First, we're going to remove this cover. All right, now we'll get this nut off. Before I go any further, we're going to get this harness out of the way. And I was hoping that this harness would be in good shape. And it looks mostly complete. There's the ECM connector. But I think I found yeah, right here, there's some cut wires. Almost got it out without ruining it, but not quite. Okay, that is a battery harness. I'm not worried about that. Now I'm going to give this just a little... Nope, going to need more than that. I gave in and put my puller on it. Sometimes you can get them out without a puller, but... And we're free. Now this can just slide out, right? Let's just hold on to the gear. Will you be quiet? One injection pump. Now I'm going to spend a minute and work on the front of this. Now the water pump. Sometimes these come right off. There we go. The water pump looks pretty good. Spins really nice. Yeah, it's decent. No. No, we're not throwing this one. It's too heavy. It'll do some damage. Next, we're going to get this water outlet and housing and bracket out of the way. Uh, did I miss a bolt? Oh. That looks like it's in good shape. Next, we're going to remove the oil filter. It has a Mobile One Extended Performance, which is also code for, I don't change my oil enough. I'm just kidding. Nope, this should do it. I'm sure it won't make a mess. I'm, I mean, please don't make a mess. That's completely dry. How is that possible? It looks like it's a brand new filter, like, no one's ever had oil run through it, but I don't know, it's kind of dirty. But how do you get all of the oil out of this? That doesn't make any sense. Next, we'll remove the oil filter housing. And then there's one bolt they decided to block with this port. And I could take that out, or I could just do this. And round the bolt off. We'll do it right. I don't like doing it right. That worked. There's the housing. It looks pretty normal. Not a lot of oil in there. And then the cooler. And then the cooler. Okay. Blue, I need you. There's oil cooler. Can't tell if that's an original part or not. It doesn't say where it's made. Everything looks good. As you all know, it is time for the test. No disconnecting rods. Now it's time to pull this engine off the wooden crate. I'm gonna pick it up with this chain. And then we're going to see if there's any oil in it. That's got to happen before I tip this thing over. Safety ball. Still a little.
little bouncy. That's good. Now, generally speaking, I don't like working on things hanging off forklifts. It's not really what we do here, but I'm going to drain the oil while it's hanging here. We'll get this bell housing adapter and flywheel off. We'll figure out what to do with the block after that. It sounds empty. Mm-hmm. Moment of truth. Mmm. Not empty. Also, water. Lots of water. I don't see any sparkles though. Yeah, that would have been a gigantic mess. While this thing's getting the last bit of oil out, which that was completely full, barely fits in my pan, we're gonna get this flywheel out. Oop, that's backwards. Now, the bell housing plate. Give it a little, a little tug there, and off she goes. Now I'm gonna show you how it's going to be just fine, because it's gonna be just fine. See, it's just fine. It's fine. All right, now that I've got the engine precariously bolted to my stand, I'm gonna rotate it. It's gonna be just fine. It's gonna be fine, I think. So far, so fine. Oh, that's that's just water. And that, what is that coming out of? Oh, the dipstick hole. Okay, that's not where water goes. Oh no, no. Well, that was very messy. But hey, at least, at least we're getting it all out, right? Now that this is comfortably upside down, we're gonna take all the old pan belts out. Now the pan should just lift right off. I mean, let's get blue. Now it'll lift off. Oh, oh, okay. Well, contrary to the name, if you put anti-seize in an engine, it will, in fact, seize. We've seen this many, many times. That's, um, that's the greatest sparkle I haven't seen. It's very fine material. I don't see any large chunks, nothing I can recognize. It's just not a good color. And the pickup isn't really coated in a bunch of silvery metal. Yes, yes it is. But it's not covered in debris. The rest of the rotating assembly, however, it's got this like paste. Why did I touch that? So I guess we gotta figure out why this thing doesn't turn over. I don't even know that it doesn't turn over. We haven't even tried that yet. That should be what we do next. First, I suppose we can try to bar this thing over. <laughs> this is the most solid feeling. Mm, yeah, that's, that's not gonna turn. So I guess we'll just strip the front of this thing. We'll get the pickup in this girdle off first. We'll see if we can see any more damage and then we'll go from there. Torx bit. Ooh, that's weighty. Well, let's take a better look here. We can see our camshaft down there. I don't see anything too terrible yet, although it does look like that rod cap is a little darker than that one. Ooh, that one is, that one's medium well, maybe even closer to well done. That one's not too bad. So I would bet that there is a problem in this 
section of the crankshaft. Which is going to be a lot of fun, because I don't know if I can get on all, both of those bolts. But we'll find out. The rest of this doesn't look too terrible. But man, one or two rod bearings keeping this thing from turning? We'll see. Next, I'm going to get the harmonic balancer off. Trigger wheel for tack signal. Now we'll get this front cover off, but first, this bracket. Time for blue again. Uh, that's not, no, that's not supposed to happen. The seal just fell apart. I gotta be careful, I don't wanna drop the gear for the injection pump. There we go. Front cover's off. Oil pump's not locked up. That's not locked, the cam's not locked up, so that's good. But I can't get to all the bolts, so that's bad. Okay, okay. We're a little further. While we're here, we're gonna get the oil pump out. There we go. I sell pretty much every single one of these, not for reuse, but people really like these things. They're great for playing with on your desk. Now, I always prefer to go front to back. It's cleaner that way. But we are gonna start with the darkest rod journal, the darkest rod cap. And the reason we're gonna do that is because I think that's what's keeping this thing from turning over. I can get to this one. I can't really get to that one, at least not that easily. So we're gonna get these bolts loose. We'll pull the rod cap off and we'll see what the bearing looks like. And maybe it'll spin over after this. Oh, okay. Uh, time for the breaker bar. This, this should do it. Those are the tightest rod cap bolts that I can remember. Moment of truth. Oh no. Wait, what am I looking at here? Oh, I see what's happened, I think. Well, that is not oriented correctly. So, that rod bearing, that's spun. And I don't really know what that sliver of metal is on the outside of the bearing. But we're gonna peel this apart, see what kind of damage lies beneath. First, let's see if we can detach this. Oh yeah, that was easy. Here we go. Oh, that, that's rough looking. Will you come back here? Give it to me. Oh, you little. So, that one's starting to come apart. It's chunking pretty bad. Let's see if I can fish the other one out. That's a negative. That's a later problem. Since we're here already, I think I can get the rod and piston out. I'm gonna find out. It's already at the top of the bore. At this point, I've removed one bad or spun set of rod bearings. So let's see if we can turn this crankshaft over. I, I still don't think this is going to work or I'm gonna get my, nope, don't do that. Nope, okay, so it's possibly less stuck, but I can't move it over. So we're gonna try to attack the other well done rod journal. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do next. All right, so one of these bolts is easy, the other bolt, not so much. All right, I don't know if this is gonna work or not, but, hey, am I turning this? No, nope. I thought maybe by cracking the one loose it would've lost its tension, but I was wrong. Okay, change of plans. I think before I struggle with that one rod cap bolt, I'm gonna loosen the mains and maybe that'll take enough resistance out of turning this over that I can rotate this enough to get the other rod cap bolt out. All 
All right, I've got the main caps loosened up. Let's see if that makes a difference. Please make a difference. Oh my gosh. Okay, maybe we'll try something a little bit bigger bar. This is safe. It's flexing, it looks like it's pulling the uh, crankshaft up, but it's not rotating. This is, this might be one of the most locked up engines we've had on the channel. That yard was not joking. Okay, so next step, we're gonna take all of the rod cap bolts out that we can get out. We're gonna get all the rods and pistons that we can get out, out. And then we're going to try it again. Next, number five. Well, that bearing wasn't spun. You know what? That can just stay there. We'll get that out later. Try to get that other bolt loose. Oh man, that was the great, great sound. Let's try this with this 3 8 ratchet. I don't know if this is gonna work. Oh, we're doing this one click at a time. Oh yes. Well, that is just fantastic. Can I get my hand in there? Oh yeah. I don't know if I can get my hand out of this. We're just gonna loosen this up most of the way. Oh. Okay, that's about as far as I can go. Um, can I have my hand back? Thank you. All right, now I gotta figure out how to get the other one buzzed out. Which... Maybe it'll turn over now. Does it work, does it work? So anxious. Oh, movement. Yes, one bearing did all that. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, okay. Um, well, that one's very spun. Nope, 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 that's part of the crank now. So this is what would have happened if I couldn't get this to turn over. Well, I couldn't get access to the bolts that hold the cam retention plate in, which means I couldn't pull the cam out. And if I don't pull the cam out, I can't pull the front cover off. And if I can't pull the front cover off, I can't get the crank out. So you see the fact that that turns over and we were able to get the crank to move, that saved my bacon here. Now we're gonna take a minute and try to knock some rods and pistons out. Cylinder three. Well, well, something bad just happened. Oh no! Oh, broken rings. Well, those aren't supposed to be in two pieces. Wow. Next, we have cylinder five. I can rotate it, it just doesn't want to go past the top. See, I have the block tilted at an angle so I don't launch these things in outer space. Perfect. All right, now we're going to loosen the rod cap. Cylinder four. Well, we've made it past the first ring. Now we can turn this over so I have access to number six and number one.
gets to that spot, right where the ring's ready to pass. Oh no! Another broken promise compression ring. Well, that's not good. What? Was that another piece of ring? Oh, wow. It, it destroyed that ring. Let's not come out. Oh, it's got little bitty ringlets. Ha, like I could get it past that second ring myself. Unfortunately, I don't have all of the rod bearings to show you. There's one set still welded to the journal. We'll get those off when the crank comes out, but they're cylinder one. It's bad. Cylinder two, much worse. They're starting to chunk out on the sides. There's the missing pair. Four looks bad. It's starting to come apart. Five looks bad. It all looks bad. Six is the best one and still not great. And then the rods and pistons. Well, you can clearly see these two had the most heat and friction in them. That's why they are much darker than the rest of them. It also broke compression rings. Number one compression ring on cylinder one and on cylinder three. Just broken. This one's in just three pieces. This one's in like four or five, five pieces. And what's, what's interesting too is that the actual contour of the ring, I know it might be hard to see on camera, but the ring is worn very unevenly, probably from it running with a broken ring. And I don't know if that's related to the bearing issue because generally speaking, I only see those rings break when the pistons strike the head and I didn't see signs of that. There's no imprints of valves or the combustion chamber or anything on the pistons or the valves. So I don't know if they traveled far enough to do that, but the area, the ring lands, that all looks bad. I think that piston might be cracked. We're gonna run these through the cleaner tomorrow and I'll get some footage of what they look like after they come out. Now it's time to pull the cam out. So we're gonna have to rotate the crank. I don't know if I can rotate that by hand, probably not. So we're gonna rotate this to where I can see the two bolts that hold the plate in. And there they are, two 13 millimeters. You can see that plate's loose and I should be able to slide this cam out. Yes. Surprisingly, the cam is actually in really good shape. It's a little bit of wear on the journals, but not, it's really not bad. This is one of the nicer Cummins cams that I've had. It's about the worst of it right there. Still not bad at all. Now it's time to get this front structure off. I think that's all of them. Let's find out. Oh yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's in good shape. This little bracket's broken, but that structure's in good shape. So earlier we got the main cap bolts out. So these should come out pretty easily. So this is what that oil, is it oil? It's a mixture of metal, water, and oil. That's what it looks like here. So now it's time to pull the crank out of this thing. What, you thought I was gonna pick that up myself? Things like 180 pounds, maybe more. Well, I sprayed off these main bearings and they are ugly. I mean, look at, looks like there's worse damage here, which is nearest the bad rod journals. 
So that makes sense. Lots of material, probably plugging up the holes. It's pretty bad looking. We've seen worse. Now the crankshaft does not look so great. And then of course, that one still has some rod bearings. We'll get those off in a second. But all of these journals have some form of wear or damage. Honestly, I did kind of expect worse for how tight this thing was locked up. And you can see quite a bit of debris packed in there. And it's not good. And even more along the side from that bearing coming apart. All right, let's get this apart. It'll just it'll just come apart, right? No, we're gonna use we're gonna see if blue will get us where we need to go. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. Now that's that's pretty bad. You know, though, for for what happened here and how tight this thing was locked up, this isn't really. It's really not as bad as I'd expect. The block isn't exactly great. It's not so bad. Most of the damage looks like it's from the broken rings and from moisture. Still pretty dirty. I didn't do a good job wiping this thing out. Yeah, you can see some more vertical damage there. It's pretty deep. Cylinder 4 looks all right. So I ran these through the parts washer and you can really tell the difference in the coloring in the bottom of the rods. They definitely got hot, very hot. The cylinder 1, I don't really see any major damage. I thought that these might be cracked, but it was just a bunch of carbon buildup stuff. I can't really, can't really tell. They did clean up really nice. That one's pretty rough around the crown. This is the part of the video where I go through some spiel about checking your oil, changing your oil on time, watching your gauges, monitoring fluid levels, maintaining your vehicle. And that's what it takes to keep these older vehicles on the road. Remember, they're not making them anymore. But this doesn't really all add up with this engine. I'm not a diesel guy, so I haven't seen a lot of things, but why are the rings broken if there were no signs that the pistons hit the cylinder head? And then the rings were broken in cylinders one and three, which only three had the bad rod bearing. Cylinder one obviously wasn't great, but it wasn't nearly as bad as two and three. So that doesn't really add up. But the most confusing part of this entire teardown is the oil filter. I've torn down a ton of engines in my life, and I can't remember the last time I pulled a completely dry, completely dry oil filter off of an engine, especially when the engine was full. So maybe that's somehow related to what happened here. I'm, I'm not really sure. Now, I've torn down four Cummins engines on this channel at this point. One other 5.9 and two 6.7s. And this was the least destroyed Cummins that I've torn down to date. And I know you guys like to see that carnage, so I'm gonna leave the links to those other three Cummins videos in this video description. And this, this one thankfully had a lot of really good parts. And that's the name of the game here. The name of the game is to buy an engine for a certain set price and sell the parts for a profit. That's how this place exists. So if you'd like to buy parts off of this engine, which there are plenty, or any of the other engines that I've torn down, or if you need a 5.9, I have two in stock right now, 24 valves, late ones. I'm gonna leave our email in the video description. You can also go to importapart.com and peruse our inventory. I've been uploading our parts cars just about every single day. If you don't see what you're looking for, you can fill out our part request form, which sends us an email of exactly what it is that you're chasing. I really hope you enjoyed this teardown, and as always, I love all the comments, all the feedback, even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one.